back here again. Welcome back to Utopia. I've got to keep making sure I say the right server. Welcome back to Utopia. I'm in my new bedroom. This is where my bedroom was before. This is where the bed was. A little 5x5 five five room here, if you remember, with my nodes. Now, a couple of people mentioned that I put these too close so I can never move these again now. If you leave a gap between these, you can always do the trapping node trapping thing again but because these are that close i can't actually do that anymore i'm curious i'm just wondering if a node of dislocation can actually move these but I, I'm, I'm not sure if it will do or not uh, sorry a wand of dislocation which is added by a family tinkerer that might be to grab nodes but i don't know i don't know but i don't i've got no plans on moving these anyway so that's all good i've done a few things since last episode then this was mainly i wanted my magic area in here near my bed so I'll tell you where I started. I started by moving the elevator. The elevator was over here. And I moved it into the middle of what will be the tower of the like house. Let's turn them off for a second. So if you come down one level now, you're right into the centre of the four spawn rooms that I'm going to set up. And if you remember, of course, they're right below this level so that they'll be in 16 block range from on this floor or the next floor. So that should be pretty cool. You see that I've upgraded the end dryer. I'll get to that in a minute. So then this is somewhere down below that again. Uh, you see I'm at level 54, just below the map there. If I go up again, I'm at 63. So I'm, I'm about 10 blocks down. So I could raise the roof of this quite a bit. Ooh, let's go back up again. I could raise the roof of this quite a bit, but uh, I think I'm going to keep it nice and cozy like this. But I have got room for another floor in between these two if I wanted to add more stuff in there. So I've got another room. For, I've got room for another sub basement. Let's say. So this room, I've got all my Thumbcraft research area over here. This is pretty cool. What I've got behind here. Now. Oh, Sky. Uh, what I've got behind here is a Ender IO Reservoir. Now you make the reservoir, of course, with these reservoir blocks. So I've got one, two, three, four blocks. Now that makes it into a reservoir. There's got a bit of a graphic glitch there, but look at it. There we go. Makes it into a reservoir. You put two buckets of water in it, and then if you right click it with a wrench, which. Oh, thank you, by the way, for letting me know that I, I changed the name of these in an anvil last time. And if I just, if you just shift right click, you can name it anyway. Hmm. So uh, I wasted some levels doing that. But if you wrench this guy, it puts it into auto pump out mode which is what that indicates there so what i've got is i've got it behind there so i've got the night or below and then behind the night or and behind the crucible is the re reservoir and that's putting water into the crucible all the time which is pretty cool so i don't have to worry about refilling the crucible it's just automatic so the crucible's always got water in it which i think is pretty cool i like doing stuff like that so that's that bit sorted I've got bookcases around this. What, I'm, what I want to do is actually get a lot of crystals around here. So I'm going to be doing that pretty soon-ish. Yeah, I want one of each of the crystals around this area. And of course I've got a load of bookcases and other bits and bobs just for decoration. These pedestals I'm starting to quite like just for putting things on. So I've got my Ice Magic book there and my Thorncraft book there floating about. And I've got a one there which I a staff that I'll get to in a minute. This sad is a light nexus from Ars Magica. Now I've covered the making of this in my most recent Resident Rise episode, which is episode 12. So I'm not going to cover it. I'm not going to really go over this much in this. So I did this build in that and I went through it a bit, in quite a bit more detail as I was doing it. But basically what this does is you need essence for certain spells. And now you can make a neutral essence nexus. It's called an essence nexus. But for that you have to put bucket of liquid essence know what you get your ice magic a book in um this guy up here you have to get a bucket of this stuff underneath the middle of it and it makes it a bit of a pain so what you can do is you can create this one instead and this is called a light nexus and this will create pure essence but what we've got here this block is called a mana battery and the mana battery and this one's full mana battery I've connected it to there using the crystal wrench. If you remember the crystal wrench from me, from uh, well, you might not remember the crystal wrench. Well, crystal wrench. I should show the recipes real quick. Crystal wrench, nice and easy. Some rare flowers there. The desert 
the Desert Novas fan in deserts. Uh, if you haven't got Desert Rowan, it can be quite hard to find. You right click this with this crystal wrench, and then you right click the mana battery. Then the power that this generates will feed into that. And as you can see, this one's full, it's got 100%. Now the spell, for example, a heal spell costs 500 essence. The reason I made this thing for, this staff, this is called a Magitek staff. And what this does, this gives you a bit more info if you click on there. If you click on there, you can see it's quite hard to read. But I've got 250,000 essence in there. And I say the spell that I've made, up to the, the heal spell, that takes 500, for example. So I've got massive overkill on the uh, amount of essence I've got stored. So I can start using for that, that for other things as we get more into ice magic here. And of course, here's my crafting altar. And I've got my bench around here. And uh, there's a lectern. So little crafting area for ice magic this side. Craft research area for Thorncraft that side. I can go back on there. Um, I can start making other things called, there's a thing called, uh, what's it called? Uh, begins with that, I can't remember, it makes certain essences you need for the armor and things like that so that's that side and then over here is this little bed area i've got a triple white ended chest which is the communal one over at spawn so i can just throw things in there if i want to share things with people and i've got my triple gray one which is my personal one and i've got my beds and i'm going to put some nicer armor there i've just got a couple of armor stands and this i spent about two hours making this yesterday morning and i put a captive squid in there and i named him with a name tag that Senso kindly gave me. And I came back on and he died, the bastard. So after spending two hours, I can't be bothered to do it. I did it the proper way with a lead. I suppose I could have borrowed a gravity gun off someone. Um, I did it legit and got him in there, but he's gone. So I'm just going to leave that as a bit of a bit of a fancy backdrop rather than having a squid in there. I can't be bothered to do it again. So if I come down here, what you see now is I'll clear this area out. Hello. Do you want? I'm the nosy. Now, I'll clear this area out apart from just emptying this chest actually, which is a chest with some bee stuff in it. And uh, got a little chicken down here. I'm actually gonna, if you don't um, look away now, if you don't like cruelty to chickens, I'm actually gonna. I've got 11 of these saw shards now because uh, I have been lurking about in a large hollow hill in the toilet forest which I shall show you in a bit. I've got a chicken soul shard, I'll have that. That'll come in handy. Oops. That'll come in handy later when I've uh, set things up. Now I crashed the server this morning so before I go any further I want first of all I want to thank Nemson for getting the server back on. Secondly I want to thank I want to thank Nicholas for getting all the mod pack sorted. This is a private mod pack of course but um it's Guy called Nicholas who puts it all together, gets all the configs working right, and I know he spends a lot of time on it. And I'd just like to say thank you very much on camera for that, for all the hard work you do. It's very, very nice. Um, I crashed the server by breaking the cow soul shard that was down there. The version of soul shards we've got, it's, it's a bit dicky that if you break a soul shard, it's meant to eject the soul shard, but it doesn't because yeah, it doesn't actually put the soul shard in, it keeps it there, so it causes crashes anyway. The newer version doesn't the version we've got on Resident Raz is the newer version and that seems to be fine so we're updating to the newer version of that tomorrow so I, I aren't going to place any soul shards until we're on that newer version because I don't want to crash the server again as you know some of you call me Echo the Breaker Um I do break things quite a bit <laughs> right so that's pretty much what I've done All right from up here I've expanded this a little bit as you can see capacitor bank I've had, I made another couple of them Senso has finished with his photovoltaic cells, so I made five of these, if you remember, and he gave me another nine, so I've got 14 altogether now. And these generate quite a decent amount of power. Um, you see, I've got in there 750,000, that's a lot of power. So I can start using that for some things. Now, I'm not sure how quick these actually generate. I don't think they generate anywhere near like a steam boiler, so we don't want to be getting into a steam boiler at some point. But what that should do, what the first thing I'm going to do with that is I have made a filler and I'm going to clear up five levels underneath my bedroom area and then I'm in the process of making a quarry so once I've got the five levels so we don't actually destroy any blocks above where we want the quarry I'm going to quarry out under my base now I don't think we have any overworld quarrying 
per se, but I'm doing this as part of the build, so I hope it doesn't break any rules, but I'm doing this as part of my build, I like to have the underneath of my base quarried out, now, what I've got is, if you look, in fact, a better way of looking at it is, look on the map, we've got this wonderful thing now, we've got Opis in, so if you mouse over that overlay there, you can see, uh, slam chunks for one, you can see, loaded chunks, so if I come out there, you can see that, at the minute, me and Sky are in the overworld, damned sky, that's, that's where his house is, and you can see which areas are chunk loaded, so we've got 3x3 three three chunk loads, that's um, Funshans, I'm not sure who lives up there, that's Lewis and Dudats, that's Andy's, that's Sensors, is that Carl's? No, no, that's Carl and Toast over there, uh, don't know who these two are, hmm, interesting. You can see chunk loaded areas, and you can see my chunk loaded areas are three by three. Well, the the bit under under the ground is them four chunks, so that's what I'm going to quarry out. I'm going to quarry out them four chunks, and then have that sub basement all the way down. So it's kind of based roughly central central on my tower. Well, that's where my farm area is going to be, and I'm my tree farm and all stuff like that underground. So that's all going to go down there. So that's the next things I'm going to get on with. I'm going to get on with getting rid of that area with a filler. And then putting a getting the quarry finished. Now for the quarry, I need a couple more diamonds. So let's go quickly show you where I've been getting them from. Um, I was going to leave hollow hills alone, they're large ones, because you don't get many large ones. And I didn't want to hog them, but then I realised everyone is so far. Well, not everyone. Me, me. I guess Bebo and Dam Sky are a little bit behind the rest of the care because we started. We joined the server about a week or two into the server's life, so we're all a little bit behind. So I thought, well, never mind then, I will actually go and abuse a large hill. So if you come down here, back into the this area, I've got a book here to a large hill. And the medium hill I was in was over there somewhere. So that was that's the map that's about roughly where the overworld is, where we live. So I came across onto the next map. I thought, I won't search that one, because I'm pr pretty sure it'll have been fully searched anyway. And if it has been searched, if there's any large hills on there, I'm pretty sure they'll have been cleared out or claimed. So I came across onto the next map, and I found this large hill over here. And if we look at it on the in-game magic map, see that I've cleared out about half of this area, and I'm at a large hill. I'm going to clear out the top of this, I want to see what this. I want to see what these maps look like in the open blocks, light box things, map boxes that there are. Uh, very cool. Um, I can show you one of them. No, okay, I'll show you later. I'll show you later. So I've got this large hill. Wonderful. And then in large hills, of course. We, I don't. My speed haste seems to get suppressed until I start jumping up and down a bit when I when I change dimension. Not sure what that's about. And what I've been trying to do is I've been trying to use my little lightning spell for range stuff where I can. Just so. Uh, Try and get my levels up a bit. Oops, missed. Pew pew pew! Pew pew pew! But my mana runs up pretty quick. So, yeah, if we look up the top of it, there we go, you see we've got plenty of diamonds up in here. So I'm going to grab some of them so I can finish off making that quarry while I'm here. And because I've got this Ascent Boost one on my armor, I can get up to these levels pretty easy. And I've made this guy as well. I didn't mention that, have I? I mentioned this again in my Resident Raz video. Senso showed me one of these in his inventory the other day. And uh, it's, it's a nice little mysterious magnet. It's like a coin of fortune from Zeno's Reliquary. And it sucks things towards you. And it's just a level zero one. But you can increase it in levels, which I presume means it pulls from a further range. But each increase requires two of the previous level. So... Um, someone worked it out on a comment for me. Who was it? Kaok, Kaok Ozen, worked it out on a comment that to get the top one you'd probably need 64 of these starter ones. So that's 64 diamonds, 64 ender eyes, 64 gold blocks. So quite expensive if you want to go for the full hog. But I don't actually need the full hog. I just wanted something to let me grab things a bit closer. So I'm going to be manually attacking this hill to get me enough resources to get things like a steam boiler and stuff on the go and speaking of that we need to get steel on the go so I also need to go into the nether 
get myself some items to make coke ovens and a blast furnace. So that's something else to get on with. So I'm going to go do a bit of work off camera, maybe for about an hour or so. Get um, a few things set up. I'll come back when I've got the filler set up because I'm going to show you how you can use it as a ghetto, uh, a ghetto quarry when you first start. Now, even though, even though it was changed quite significantly a bit back, if you do it nice and slow, you can still use it to grab stuff. So I'll be doing that, and I'll be back when I'm ready for that. See you in a bit. Hello, I'm back, and some time has passed, and I've been messing around doing various things. Now, there's a couple of things I forgot to show you earlier. One is I've changed this around a little bit. I've added a little underground area. I've got some Project Red inverted lamps there. And uh, down here, I've got my furnace and my Alembics. Now, if you watch Die Wolf's Forgecraft, you know, the newer version of Thaumcraft, it has got the essential tubes. And what they can do, they fasten to the Alembics, and they'll pump the liquid straight into the jars. So that's my plan for this. That was always the plan. I just didn't have the room set up below it. So, in theory, I should be able to come down here, throw stuff in that, come back up, and it'll, it'll pump straight into these. Now, whether I have to change the piping a little bit so it comes up on the top of these but even if it comes up across and down each one I think the tubes look pretty cool anyway so that's kind of a part of what I'm trying to go for with the uh, with the look of that so I might need more jars as well so I might have to glue these rows as well but uh, who knows who knows we'll find out a couple of other things I started bees yesterday as well not automated yet I did try automating these with transvectors um, translocators transvectors with translocators but uh, it didn't work quite right so I just took it off for now but I just wanted to get a few bees going so I've got a little pristine um, forest and meadows just getting a few drones there and to do that if you remember the day I said that I accidentally created a couple of stacks of bronze so I just made the three basic carpenter tools carpenter centrifuge squeezer not to use a centrifuge there because yeah, that's for honeycomb and stuff but squeeze it I just squeeze some seeds I had from the farm downstairs enough to get me two impregnated impregnated casings and then I made two apiaries in the carpenter there all very straightforward very basic stuff um, so I won't actually go into that any further I while I was out getting some resources I'm going to show you that in a minute because you can see I've just made a little basic ME network I finished that map I've run around and I I have taken out the only large hill on there so I hope no one no one man sorry guys if uh, people was trying to save hills I said this this world is to the this part of the overworld is to the east of this map so this map is equivalent to over there somewhere but I um, I made a map thing light blocks light box from open blocks see if it works unfortunately it doesn't work on there so the map don't work in there I thought it might do um, I suppose I could take it to the toilet forest and see if it works. No man, but because I had a light box med, I ended up making six. I've just got a little map on my base there. And my base is maybe too little to actually be worth one of these, but there it is. A little sliver of land there. Uh, I think I will attach to the mainland at some point in the future. Possibly with a little train network. A little train takes you across like a pier, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, so I'm kind of ready downstairs to start using the filler what I'm going to use I need I'm going to need eight glass nine glass blocks one two three four five six seven eight nine nine and after that I'm going to use a quarry which I've not made yet but I made the diamond pickaxe it was needing so there we've got a quarry awesome now we need a couple of other things we need somewhere for all the stuff to go which is why I've made a really basic ME network so most basic because possible ME controller an access terminal a chest and I made a 16k storage for the chest I won't run over this because I've covered this loads of times and everyone covers this speaking of everyone thank you very much Ego I forgot to mention earlier Ego dropped me some stacks of clay off awesome dude thank you very much and Duda offered me a very nice bow but I, I'm trying to use magic so I'll turn him down but I said I'd say thank you and give him a mention so go check out Ego's channel go check out Duda's channel there we go how was that guys look at that and um, the way I've decided to put things into here is so my quarry will be down wherever it's quarrying and okay don't do that um, I've got a now my colour is triple light grey but do a double light grey but I've also diamonded these as well just because I'm going to say it's safer to keep your stuff diamonded then no one can accidentally c uh, connect their scrap system or whatever 
to your thingy. So mine's well double grey, but I've also diamonded it. So if we look in there, that matches to this one. I throw anything in there, boom, it goes straight away. And it goes straight away because if you look in here, if you right click with that, these are your basic translocators, of course. So, you, oops, don't want to do that. So you turn it on. Turn off. I'll turn it off. I'll turn you off. There's one way to turn it off, I suppose. So, I don't think that, that even turns it off, does it? No, look, it still knows. It, it's clever. There we go. I won't click in it right. So, that's all to come. So, you click it in the one that you want it to be with receiver, of course. And that will pull through that pretty quick. See it pretty quick there. Pretty quick. But if you want to run in a quarry at max speed, it might not be quick enough. So, what you can do, a bit of glowstone dust. Just click that with a bit of glowstone dust. And now, it just stacks. So, really nice for getting stuff from your quarry into your ME network via your ME interface. Sorted. So that's how we're doing that. And then the other thing we need to work out is how we're going to power this. So there's all the stuff I needed for the ME network, by the way. Basic process assembly, advanced, so on and so on. So I don't have to make much. Um, we're going to power this. Now, I'm not sure if my little photo bit full there. I'm not sure if these guys are up for this, but we'll see how quick it drains. I made all the bits to make a dimensional transceiver. So I made a couple of them. Not connected them up or anything yet. Well, obsidian, phased alloy, phased alloy, if we track that back, is energe energetic alloy with ender pearl, and that is redstone, golden, glowstone. Pretty straightforward. And then the octadic capacitor, which is the third one. You get the basic double and then the octadic so one of them and a diamond and an iron easy enough and as I was making them I made a couple more of them I put one in here so that now holds 100,000 so if you remember with nothing it holds 10 with a double it holds 20 and now with that it holds 100,000 MJs in there which is kind of awesome one in there as well in my sag mill um, speaking of I made the painter because these blocks needed painting so uh, I made the painter block as well once I got some diamonds. But, uh, at the minute, I've only done them temporary because this is all going to move once I've sorted my floor out. Checking the camera on a bit there, sorry. So how this works is this needs to be attached to the power. How am I going to do that? Um, actually, That don't need to be fastened to there, does it? I just saw that. Out oh, the corner of my eye, I just saw that extra waste of wire, and I don't know if it causes any kind of loops or anything, but just being the safe side. Let's grab my wrench and pop that off there. Thank you. And like I said, this is temporary until I get situated properly. Now, by situated properly, I mean I want at least one floor done with the next with the next floor on, and these walls double thickness rather than single and then I'll work out where it's all going to go and I'll cover the blocks properly the floor and stuff so for now we can just sling it on there now see that sticking power I think that's taking power just by being touching that and it blocked back up again huh. so maybe it has a uh, uh. So it was taking power maybe because it's got some kind of buffer in there. Okay, so let's go and do the first bit then. So let's break that. Break that. So if we come down to my room here. Oh, this by the way, I didn't mention it either. Loads, I, did, I was messing around doing loads of stuff. This is redstone inlay. I don't know if it's got a, another purpose, but I just like the look of it. So I thought, I wonder if I can place it anywhere. It turns out you can and it creates a nice little pattern. So I thought I'd put one of them around my elevator there. I might put them everywhere because I like the look of that. Uh, anyway, so I dug down here using F9 so I can get the edges properly. So one, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Ah, yeah, because we're one lower. We're one lower down here, look. So hopefully I won't actually damage any of my base here. 
<laughs> that's the plan. There could be a massive flood. I don't think there's anything in this room that's below the level of the floor. Um, at least I hope not. I don't think I'm going to damage anything, so that's good. So I've just gone one block outside of the red here, which will give us a little area to put the quarry for him. That's all I'm doing here. I'm just clearing up the quarry for him area. And if you didn't know, if you use a redstone torch, now this is bugged out because this is showing the blue line still. If you use a redstone torch, it shows you this blue line. It shows you the extent of where your landmarks can reach. So I'm just going to click on that landmark. Boop, and it should connect to all three. Wonderful. And in my magical bag here, I've got that guy. We can now put glass in, which is a clear pattern. And what I actually want to do is, before we start this, let's turn the back off so you get the gist of that now. Yep. I actually want to limit the amount of power that that thing's putting out. So this capacitor, see the max output's 300. I'm going to put that down at 10 for, for no, I'm not I'm going to put it down at 20, just for now. So I don't want this kicking out loads. Now this does have a cost and it has another 10% cost loss of power. I need to make sure 20 is enough to keep this running. And it is. So look, that's taking two at the minute. And that's maximum it's putting out 20. So all we're running really at the minute is that, is that and we're going to be running the the filler. So this should be nice and slow. <laughs> and it shouldn't destroy anything. Ah, I'll tell you what else I haven't done. I haven't put a... Let's go back up there anyway. Boop. And what we need to do is set a channel in here. Echo. And uh, make it private. Add it. Make it active. And then down here. Echo. Make that active. This should be getting power. And it's destroying blocks. And you can see it is, look. And it should be nice and slow. It's not slow at all. 20 is still very quick. Let's limit that somewhat. Oh shit. Oh shit, I fucked up. <laughs> oh. Look at that, eh? I've made a mess. I've destroyed loads of stuff. Because these destroy the blocks. That's gone miles quicker than I expected it to. Destroy quartz blocks. I've destroyed the reservoir. Uh, oh, that might be it, though. And loads of this witchwood. That I, that I really like this witchwood. But, eh. Uh, shit. Well, that happened. Hmm. Well, I cocked that off, haven't I? Right. Um, I thought what, using this slow, you can kind of... Oh, shit. You can kind of, if you get it going real slow, once you've got two layers out, you can run around and collect stuff. That's, oh, dear. <laughs> right, I'm going to cut the camera. I'll be back in a bit. And I'm back. <laughs> the damage wasn't too bad. There's, look at this. What's this? One, two, three, four, five, six. There's the issue. Some dickhead can't count and put the put the landmark one block away. As if. What a knob. Uh, I managed to recover my elevator block. It was down there. So that's okay. So what have I lost? I've lost 24 quartz blocks. One iron block at the middle of there. Two reservoirs blocks and I found a bit of nights on the floor so that's all, I've lo that's all I've really lost. I've got about 100 or so of this witch wood in the chest so I'm guessing it caught most of it. I caught most of witch wood as well. Stuff from the filler despawns after a few seconds but it will hang around for a little bit. So there we go we've got this area cleared now one block too high. Beautiful. So we can get rid of that and I'm going to have to Relog to get rid of this blue line because it's bugged out a bit. But next step then is to put in a quarry in the same place. And the whole point of that futile exercise, of course, was to 
clear the five block space out one two three four five that the quarry needs to make its frame so and the fact that the quarry takes ages if you put a quarry there you could have done it and it would cut all this out but the laser is really slow and it probably took about an hour where's that even with the speed 10 right down to 20 it was really quick uh, if we left that on at like 300 it would have just flown through that but it probably has got a cap but I don't know what the cap is so let's just I wonder I'll break that guy do I dare hit it I'll just do that oh, I've got no light okay so I am going to set the quarry up exactly the same one as if two I'll connect them up straight away anyway and the third one's going to be over here Whee. three so that's my quarry markings uh, I'm going to get my quarry started it's going to be nice and straightforward that's easy enough quarry can just go in there like so Bosch. So that looks right. 16 chunks loaded. And then what I want to do, I want to put my chest, which is currently dumped on there. I see this by the way, this is quite a little nice thing I found out as a side effect of that dep. Um, these blocks, they can stay floating in the air and you can walk on them. So you could use them to like make bridges, shit like that. Very cool. So that can actually go one pot lower now. This can go down there where it wants to be. On top of that guy. That's going to put everything in the quarry mines into my little fledgling A network. And then my dimensional geezer can go there. And he's still connected. So we should be making a frame. So the little laser guy here. Dave, the laser. He didn't have to mess around clearing out all this area. He's just straight on with the making of the frame. Cool, I'll be back in a bit when this is kind of doing something more exciting. And uh, see what's next. Back in a bit. Okay then, here I am back again and some time has passed and I'm at the point where I want to get the video encoding. So I'm going to stop just about here. So it's a bit of a short episode. Now, the quarry drained all the power down. You see it's night time. I think it's because it's nighttime. time my power's going down anyway. I need to learn a little bit more about this mod. I'll, I'll watch people spotlight again or check the wiki. But I think these put out one MGA tick each during the day. I'm not sure what they'll put out at night. I've got that reader, but I don't really understand what I'm looking at with it. Um, average output, nothing. Average input, nothing. Is it because it's night time? Internal buffer for tick request. Current request, 300 MJ. 300 MJ. Um, is that because I've got that set to that? Anyway, so there certainly is enough. That's the wrong one. Come back, you. You go in there. Um, so, yeah, that drained right down. I had to slow it right down. I've got some stuff, though. I've got quite a bit of stuff there, as you can see. So, what I've done is down here. Oh, and by the way, because I got the blocks knocked out under them, I'm actually happy I did it now because like, they've got nice little particle effects when there's nothing underneath them. It's kind of cool. So as you can see, I've changed my base to have these on all levels. So I've got the main upstairs, all the technical stuff. And then we've got the dungeon type area. And then we've got the magic area. And then this is going to be the farm area. And I've run out of marble, so I can't do the walls. This is eventually going to be all clay when I've got plenty of clay. But I'm just doing it marble for now. I like marble, but I've used it too much in the past to like it enough to use it again. So that is going to be going. And this is my farm area. This half is going to be a Steve's Cat tree farm. And then this half is going to be my plant farms, reeds, carrots, taters, all stuff like that. But what about MFR? I'm not really sure I'm going to automate them. Um, I might just get them all set up ready just to plonk an MFR harvester on once we get that to the pack. Because we're getting to that pack, we're getting that added to the pack temporarily. So I could just fill up my E network, fill up um, so I've got loads of stock. But I ain't going to use it as a constant type of power because I don't know if we're keeping MFR. And um, it's probably going to be going again. So that's uh, it for down here. I'm going to now make a Steve's Cart's cart assembler, which is a first step on making a Steve's Cart thing. So why don't we grab some of that? What was that again? I forgot already. 
simple PCBs there were simple PCBs easy enough let's get two of them made now I don't know what level cat I can go for I've got quite a lot of resources in that hollow hill I can man out which uh, I'm gonna be doing manually of course so it's gonna take me a little while I don't want to set up a quarry my quarry in the in the twilight forest I'm gonna use it in a in the proper mining ages once I've got enough power to run it so that's why I want to get Steve's cart's tree farm on the go get some wood start getting that processed into charcoal and then we can fire up a boiler so there's a couple of things I need to be doing off camera between this episode and the next one of them will be getting a coke oven and a blast furnace going where can you go one of them you can go there so um, yeah let's see what kind of cat I can make let's have a quick look at Galgadorian and see how far off I am from it Galgadorian hull so I need for the hull I need one two three four five seven Galgadorian metal and each two of them is nine diamonds and nine eighteen twenty seven that's thirty six diamonds it's gonna be quite expensive it's gonna be quite expensive indeed I think I might be able to handle it though so I need more diamonds for that as well at the minute I'm sitting on 25 but there's still going to be some more in that hollow hill of course I've got fortune 3 so that's helping so yeah I'll, I'll see what I can make now a couple of other things I haven't been doing any bees on camera this series um, I'll be I'll give you progress reports on what I've been doing what I'm doing with bees but I will actually be doing breeding and stuff like that on camera uh, I've covered it quite a bit in the past and um, it's that time consuming like in the last series I did Unleashed I actually had a sad series a little extra series doing the bee stuff so I'm just, I'll give you updates but I'll be doing most of that off camera um, is that about it? so come on power is it daytime yet? Mm, don't know the I think yeah I think that's about everything I want to cover so in fact I shall just leave it there as maybe a short episode and I hope it was enjoyable uh, I hope you enjoyed me making a mess of my floor and I hope you join me next time cheers bye